this prediction that's right up here. Uh, or just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Ranger. Ah, Alright, so one thing that was a topic of the first on the mark that I had was how infuriated I was and sometimes the way the Rangers are treated by Madison Square Garden Network. So, to further cement things, here is the introductory press conference um, that they had for Gerard Gallant. And as you can see, there's Chris Drury in a hostage negotiation situation because he already talked. Why the hell was the camera on him? Um, but we got Force Ghost Gerard Gallant. It drives me up a wall because they couldn't A, bring him down, B, just put a different background or something and just let him do it from his house if you get a zoom call it it's it's this is this is high school stuff this honestly our our podcast operates on whatever i got in my wallet and that had a bigger budget than this so it's it, it drives me crazy whenever the new york rangers do things like this now by the way going back to what i said before is when they Heidi the Rangers and uh, and cut out the shootout uh, versus the Pittsburgh Penguins to put on the Knicks pregame show. So, it, do you think they would ever do that if they had uh, if, if when they signed Tom Thibodeau? You think they would do that when it, when Julius Randall is going to resign? No, of course not. They they would never do that to the Knicks, but they did that to the Rangers. So you can't help but have a little bit of um just. Uh, kid brother syndrome like or, or even the redheaded stepchild syndrome what are they doing and this is a huge hire and i hope it's just a footnote i hope it we, we are, we're just laughing about i'm already kind of laughing about this a little bit but um it's just uh, come on R rangers deserve as much respect if not more than the knicks because they haven't been turned into a circus this year yeah, we were a circus, let's be honest. But, w come on, that's that's inexcusable. I mean, the only thing that could be worse would be if um, if you gave uh, Chinese replica jerseys to your uh, alumni, like the Buffalo Sabres did. So, it's just, come on, give the Rangers and their fans, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the graphic up. But yeah, what what the hell with the, with the Golan presser? It's, uh, it, 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 he should, he could have been right next to Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda, in all <laughs> honesty. So come on. This is but at least now, on the other hand, the content of everything that was said, great, which was, um, introducing Gerard Gallant, everything he said, how he wants his team to be the hardest working team on the ice every single night and a tough team to play against in the league already loving it. And, but then again, like John said in his Chris Drury uh, honest presser, then you get guys asking about David Quinn. David Quinn is so yesterday's news. He's, he hasn't been the coach of the Rangers for over six weeks or four weeks in that case by the time this was out because I'm a little bit late to the party. But again, come on, Rangers. Come on, MSJ. Pony up the dough and, and especially Jim Dolan. Jim Dolan should have seen that and immediately punched the AV uh head in the face so come on thoughts i can tell you right now if that was vince mcmahon and it was wwe vince mcmahon would have fired somebody on the spot for that yeah! and i've seen him flip out for for less like i've seen him flip out for production issues and let people go and things that happened backstage uh jim dolan I don't know what he's doing with that, but they did that too with um, with the press conference when they when they introduced Chris Drew. Like hit that it was that background too. Oh, I know a certain reporter who loves David Quinn. Absolutely loves David Quinn. He actually blocked me on Twitter because of it. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a good one. That could be a good one. I gotta throw this one in there just because I know you're doing it for fun. Tony D for captain. <laughs> Tony D for captain. Yeah, but, but go ahead with your with the the press love and David Quinn. 
there's a certain reporter who loves David Quinn and actually blocked me on Twitter because he was defending David Quinn and ask the question what young players languished in the fourth line in the bottom six and he immediately got ratioed because everybody just came right after him and told him about Vitaly Kravtsov and Capo Caco and the long laundry list of other players that should have gotten chances in the top six and I made a joke stating that I found who because I know that the writers don't vote on the Jack Adams. I, <laughs> I know this joke. Yeah, I made a joke stating that I found out, and now I know who gave uh, David Quinn his third place Jack Adams vote. And he decided that he wanted to block me because he was not uh, happy with it. After calling me a clown, I turned around and said, well, you want to make clown show takes, defending a clown show coach, you're going to get clowned on, you know, so man up and take it. And then I got blocked. So, you know what? Good riddance to that reporter. Um, I don't really care. I just thought it was funny because you're talking about people who love David Quinn for whatever reason. And I don't know why this person would add any such sort of care for David Quinn at this point, considering that David Quinn's gone. You want to latch on to your guy? Now is the time to start uh, kissing up to Gerard Gallant, buddy. Just saying. And, uh, again, I have no idea how the hell David Quinn got that, um, that third place vote when you re- literally were away from the team for two weeks and they had their best stretch. That's just, I mean, and, and Sean, you're right about this. That presser was public access TV quality. Oh, it yeah. wasn't even public access TV quality. It was like someone decided that, like a like a kindergartner tried to test their luck with uh, Photoshop and tried to make a video, and it, it came out like crap. So public access is uh, being kind. Yeah, and then of course, um, uh, the angle that they shot Gallant on was almost straight up his nose. I mean, I mean, I just got Phil like a tripod to try to get him more eye level, but. Even that, Phil's angle is a lot better than that one. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I've been told that you could see up my nose a little bit, but uh, I don't think... Much. But you don't look down your nose at the rest of us, so that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I don't uh, I don't think my angle is nearly as bad as Gerard's was there. Yeah. And I mean, this is the... Inter- you're, you're, who's the most... You, you guys know what the most valuable franchise in the NHL is? Yeah, it's the yeah. New York Rangers. I was pointing down at the logo. Sorry. <laughs> so, all right. Sometimes I forget when you know the recipient if it's mirrored. Yeah, but that, that logo down there in the bottom right. Yeah, it's the New York Rangers. They're they're the first one over a billion. They're well over a billion now. So it's it's just no, no. You can't be doing this. It looks terrible, Anthony. Yeah, it was just it was Bush League. It was like put together by look like a bunch of like I don't even know high school kids, but not much experience with uh, with technological type of stuff. But um, I mean, my thought is why not? It, clearly, if you don't have the the enough time or or setup to do it properly, why not just do a strict like audio type of um, thing where there's no there's no video. You just make. Make a nice graphic that says, you know, Chris Drury, Gerard Gallant, press conference availability, and just have it be audio, and then people can, um, people can look, people can listen to it. Like, um, uh, after all the Islanders exit interviews, Lou Lamorello had his end of season availability, and it played back on Islanders.com just with, you know, Lou Lamorello, president GM. And it was, you know, behind the Islander, you know, little, their little cityscape backdrop. And you just listen to it. And it was fun. So why not, if you, if you can't go ahead and do it right, why not just do that as opposed to putting together some video where, where Gallant looks just like he's, like you said, a shot going up his nose, a really awkward angle. And then... Drew looked like, like it was in a hostage negotiation. Yeah, it just didn't. I just didn't jive. They should have done it that way if they weren't prepared to do it right. But hey, and then, you know, it is what and it is. And they didn't have anything to at least, it was either the cameras on Drury 
or while everybody was even asking questions going back and forth at one point they had where the camera goes to the the person let me just stop my cam see uh, i got my avatar from my old acting days by the way don't i look good and it's just it, it, it had the just the person thing that was on there and the not even take away take away my picture it had that silhouette of the person you guys know what it is i'm looking at several of them right here but it, and they, and i think the person even said am i on it was so terrible or just pay a local studio near Golan to get him in for an hour yeah i mean he could have done it hour i did i did ours uh, two weeks on the road with my ipad pro those came out better than this here's your i don't know you you're on your MSG, your your Madison Square Garden, your your huge conglomerate. But it wasn't on MSG either. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't even on the network. What are they airing during the daytime in the middle of the week? That's so damn important. In the off season. In the off, it, it, well, I mean, I guess the Knicks were still playing, but no, nope. the Nick the Knicks aren't on. The game isn't on. It's the middle of the day during the middle of the week. Air the damn presser. Air it. It's your network. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything. It's like when the Mets did some press conferences last year, and it was just, um, yeah, Justin, it was an old Knicks game. It wasn't even a, a, a recent one. The Mets did a, a couple online pressers, and you're like, why isn't this on SNY, and why is Prospects on? So it's, it, it, it's this is where stuff like this is embarrassing, because... I'll redirect it back to Anthony. Do you think Ledecky would get away would would let the Islanders get away with that now? No, absolutely not. Yeah, we know John Spano would. That's a different story. Yeah, and we know Milstein and Glucks are going to do it. So, yeah. uh, no. hell, those guys, those guys tried to get the the Coliseum condemned when they had Sesame Street Live underneath the scoreboard <laughs> that was going to kill everybody. So, yeah. uh, I want it to be the hardest working team in the league. I want us to compete hard, to battle hard, to make teams say, you know what, that team works hard every night. They compete hard for 60 minutes, and that's why they're, you know, they're winning hockey games every night. So we can do a lot of good things. We can be skilled. We can be talented. But if the work doesn't come first, you know, the skill and talent doesn't get, get too far down the road. So I want to make sure we're working hard every night and compete hard every night. All right. Um, again... Guys, I'm going to splice in some more footage of it, but what do you think about the Rangers presser? How embarrassed were you like that? Do you think Gerard Gallant is going to use the force and let it guide his actions? <laughs> but, uh, by the way, Gerard Gallant would already be better than J.J. Uh, Abrams for a new Star Wars movie because he knows the direction to go and have be successful, not just copy and paste what someone else did. Thanks, J.J. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> I can't wait to see the comments blow up on that one. I hope that. Did you like the video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.